In today's video, I'll show you how to search a large SharePoint list and return the matching results to Power Apps with no delegation warning. We can't use the Power Apps search function here because it doesn't have delegation support. So instead, we'll build the Power Automate flow to perform the search, return the results to Power Apps, and display the results in the gallery. I'm Matthew Devaney. Let's go make Power Apps together. Let's start by taking a look at the SharePoint list we'll be using in today's example. This list is called Car Inventory and holds all of the cars on the lot at a car dealership. We're going to build an app that allows a salesperson to search this entire SharePoint list and see if a car is in stock for their customer. The SharePoint list is over 6,000 items long, so normally delegation would be a problem here. But I'm going to show you a delegation workaround for the search function that allows you to return all the matching cars into a Power App. Let's see how it's done. I've already got a basic Power App started up here, and we need to add a couple more controls to it. So we'll start by adding a text input, and this text input is where the user is going to input their search terms. So we'll name it something handy like txt underscore search. Then we're going to place a button beside the text input, and when the user clicks that button, it's going to perform the search. So we'll name that button search. And we'll also give it a name of btn underscore search. Great. Next thing we want to do is connect our SharePoint list to the app. So we go over here to the data tab, we click on add data. We're going to look for the SharePoint list. This will just take a minute to open up here. Looks great. We select the car inventory list and there we go. Now we have it added as a connection to our app. Now we'll place a gallery in the main portion of the app. Here we go. And we're going to connect this gallery over to our SharePoint list. So we use the car inventory as the data source. We're going to choose single line here, the title uh, for our app. And now we just want to make a slight modification. Here we want to show the year, the make, and the model of the car. And you might remember all those things are found in our SharePoint list. So I'm just going to type this out, this item dot car year and this item dot car make and this item dot car model. Looks great. Now we can see all of the cars found in our SharePoint list. Now let's give our users an ability to search them. PowerApps does have a search function, so you'd think that'd be the solution here. But the problem is the search function doesn't have delegation support for SharePoint. And so we're going to have to use Power Automate as a workaround. Before I do that, let's just take a look at what happens when I use the search function to search this list. So I'll click on the vertical gallery and start typing out the search function. We're going to search whatever words are in that search bar. And let's search the car model column. Later on, I'll show you how to search multiple columns with Power Automate. So no worries there. But there you go. There you can see we have a delegation warning highlighted in blue and it says delegation warning. The search part of this formula might not work correctly on large data sets. And that's true. So whatever we type into that search bar, it's only going to look at the first 500 items in that SharePoint list and return the results from that. So not what we want. We're going to have to use Power Automate instead. Now let's head on over to the Power Automate tab and start to build a flow. Go ahead and create a new flow from blank and use the Power Apps V2 trigger at the start here. Delete the one that's showing and use V2 instead. I like this a lot better because you get to choose the type of user input. Here we'll call the field search term. And this is what's going to hold the search term coming in from the search bar in Power Apps. Let's add another step called get items. Get items from SharePoint. We'll use my blog as the site address. We'll use car inventory as the list name and then we'll start to write our filter query. Now the magic word in this filter query is substring of. And using this function, we're going to be able to search the SharePoint list for whatever search terms we put in in Power Apps. So we write substring of, single quote, put the search term after it, and another single quote after, and then we put the name of the column that we want to search. We can even add a second column here by writing or substring of again and doing pretty much the same thing with a different column name. So I'm going to type car model right here. Perfect. That's all we need to do to get our, our search results. 
We can also define a top count. This is how many records are going to be pulled back into the Power App. I like to do 100 personally, but just know that you can increase this all the way up to 5,000. And this is not to be confused with delegation. This is just how many search results you want to return to the app. It's still going to search all 6,000 rows in the SharePoint list or more. But you have to do another little thing over here. you got to go to the settings and turn on pagination. I'm going to type in 10,000 in this pagination threshold. And it's going to allow the flow to look at the first 10,000 items in that SharePoint list. Now, if your SharePoint list is larger, you can bump this all the way up to 100,000 items. No problem. But when you go over that 100,001, that's too many. So there is a limit here, but it's a really big limit. And if you're using over 100,000 items in a SharePoint list, well, <laughs> you might want to start to look at using another data source instead. So we'll bump that back down to 10,000 and click Done. And we're done writing our Get Items action. Next thing we want to do is use a Select action because the Get Items action returns a lot of different columns and we don't need all of them in Power Apps. We just need a few. We only need the ID column, the Car Year column, the Car Model column, and the car make column. And I've got these in the wrong order here, so I'll just switch them around. So on the left-hand side, these are the names of the columns that we're bringing into Power Apps. And here we need to load them with values from the SharePoint list that we just searched. So I'll pick ID, I'll pick car make, I'll pick car model, and I'll pick the last one, car year. Great. Then we'll add another step. And we want to put the results of the select into a compose action. Now you might ask, why am I doing this? Well, the select outputs a JSON. And we want to convert that into text because, well, we need to bring text back into Power Apps. So I use the compose action right here. The last step is we're going to respond to a Power App in a flow. There we go. We'll select that step. We'll add an output. And here we'll give this a name, search results, and load it up with the data from the compose action. Great. So now we've got our flow. Probably ought to give this one a name too. So let's call it search SP list. Great. Let's hit the Save button and head on back into Power Apps. In order to read the results sent back by Power Automate, we need to use the parse JSON function, and that's still an experimental feature. So we need to enable it. Go to Settings, take a look at Upcoming Features, and type in parse JSON. Here you can see I've already enabled it, but you're going to need to go ahead and turn this on. OK, there's been a lot of buildup. But now we're finally ready to bring those search results back into our Power App. We just need to write one more piece of code, and then we're there. So bear with me. We're going to write some code in the onSelect property of the Search button. And we're going to put the search results into a collection. So I'll type clear collect car inventory. And next, we'll do a for all loop. Uh, why are we going to do a for all loop? Well, we got a huge block of text back from the Power Automate flow, and it's in text format. We need to parse it with parse JSON, which turns it into a collection. But then we need to loop over each row in that collection in order to display the search results. So this formula is a little bit gnarly. I'll start by typing table and then parse JSON. Here we'll grab the name of the Power Automate flow, search SP list, and run, because if you want to run it, you have to type run. Then we're going to load in our search bar as the first parameter for the flow, so txt underscore search dot text. Then once that flow runs, it's going to return some search results. So we'll type dot search results, and we'll close this off with two ending brackets. Then we're going to define what the for all function should output. So I'll put two squiggly brackets there. I'll get a little bit ahead of myself just closing off this, this formula. So 
Here I'll type ID because we want to return the ID. We'll type value because the ID number is a number, right? So we convert it into a number using value. So we'll type value.id. Next thing we want is the car year. So we'll type value, value.car year. Then we'll type in car make, text value dot car make, and finally car model. So text bracket value dot car model. So for each record of the search results we bring back, we're going to bring back a ID in the form of a number the car year in the form of a number, the car make in the form of text, and car model in the form of text. Now if this all seemed a little bit gnarly to you and difficult to understand, not to worry. I've got a full blog on this topic and I'll link to it inside of the show notes. Great, so now we've got a collection here called Coal Car Inventory. We're going to replace the items in this collection, in this gallery, with COL Car Inventory. And now when we type in a word up here, it's going to return the matching results in the gallery. So I'll type SUB and click on search. And boom, there we go. Search results. That's awesome. So you can see I've got a Mitsubishi Eclipse here. I've got a Subaru Legacy. So we're doing matches on the car make column. But then we've also got some matches on the car model column as well because I've got a 1998 GMC Suburban here. This is so exciting and I just want to prove to you that this really works. So we're going to do one more search. Let's search for the last item in our SharePoint list. It's a 2008 GMC Safari. It's a 6,000th item. I'm going to use the word far here in the search bar because far is in Safari. And if we browse to the bottom, there we go. 2008 GMC Safari. So we got it. There's a few more things you'll want to do to make this a complete app. You'll want to show some results in the gallery right when the app starts up and you'll want to show some results in the gallery when the user clicks search but there's nothing in the search bar. So I've got instructions on how to do that. You can find them at matthewavani.com. That's my blog. And I'll go ahead and leave a link to that in the show notes so you can finish this app off. I'm Matthew Devaney. See you next time where we'll make more awesome power apps together.